good night and welcome to Friday Night Bible Study. This is Hope Bay Ministries. We are delighted to have you with us tonight. Tonight we have with us a guest preacher. Tonight we have with us a guest minister who will be delivering the Bible study tonight. Oh, this has been a long time coming. We are blessed by our husband's ministry who is on with us on every service. And tonight, the, his wife has taken the leap of faith, as I like to call it. She has availed herself to be used by the Lord. She's certainly a called and elect woman for this time. I want you to help me welcome to Hope Bay Ministries as a minister, as a preacher, as a teacher for the first time, Sister Rosalind Robinson. She has a dynamic ministry. We have a wonderful history. I won't go into that now, but we are blessed to have her tonight. She's here to deliver the word and her title is what we need. The title of the word tonight is what we've all been asking. Where is God in all of this? She will dissect the book of Habakkuk with us tonight. All chapters, get ready, get your papers, get your pencils, get your pens, iPads, electronic devices, computers, whatever it is that you use to take notes. This will be a power packed night. I am truly blessed to offer our platform to this wonderful woman of God, Sister Roslyn Robinson. Over to you, Sister Ros. Unmute her, please. Good night, everyone. Very happy to be here with Hope Bay Ministries um, to do this Bible study. And as, as Minister Nidhi said, um, she, it is long in coming. She's often invited me to do this. And I, I this time I've accepted. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here and, and blessed. And I'm looking forward to what God is about to do tonight. Uh, tonight we're studying the book of Habakkuk. But before we start, I just want to say a little prayer. Father God, we invite you into this place, we invite you into this time, we invite you into this, this service right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we give this service up to you, Father God. I give myself over to you as a vessel to be used by you, Father God. I decree so you increase, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you for, for your, your minister to me during this, this, this season. It's been a few weeks and you've been speaking to me about this. It's been on my heart for years. I've been like Habakkuk. And um, so this, 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 this book is very special to me. I thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. I thank you, Lord, for the lives that will be changed, the, 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 the positions that will be changed, the worldviews that will be changed, for the outcome that is your outcome in the mighty name of Jesus. May your will be done in Jesus' name. I thank you, God. Amen. Okay. So tonight we're, we're, we're studying Habakkuk, and Habakkuk is considered one of the 12 minor prophets, and they're called minor because of the size of the book, small. And the book comprises of three chapters, and the first two are a dialogue between Habakkuk and God, and the third book uh, was Habakkuk's prayer. So I'm hoping that we can accomplish within this time frame this study. And um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go and read the, the, the book first. So I'm, I'm asking you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Habakkuk. And um, it's three chapters, so we want to get through this. Uh, so just pay close attention. Um, so the oracle with Habakkuk the prophet. And Habakkuk in chapter one is asking, to how long, O Lord, will I call for help? and you will not hear. I cry out to you violence, yet you do not save. Why do you make me see iniquity and cause me to look on wickedness? Yes, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contention arises. Therefore, the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. 
For the wicked surrounds the righteous, therefore justice comes out perverted. The Lord replies, look among the nations, observe, be astonished, wonder, because I am doing something in your days. You would not believe it if you were told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that fierce and impetuous people, and I'm, I'm reading from the, the NASB Bible, that fierce and impetuous people who marched through the earth to seize dwelling places which are not theirs. In seven, verse seven, they are dreaded and feared. Their justice and authority originates with themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards and keener than wolves in the evening. Their horsemen come galloping. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping down to devour. All of them come for violence. Their hordes of faces moves forward. They collect captives like sand. They mock at kings and rulers are, laugh, are a laughing matter to them. They laugh at every fortress and heap up rubble to capture it. Then they will sweep through like the wind and pass on, but they will be held guilty. They whose strength is their God. And have a ask him, are you not from everlasting, O Lord, my God, my Holy One? We will not die. You, O Lord, have appointed them to judge, and you, O Rock, have established them to correct. Your eyes are too pure to approve evil, and you cannot look on wickedness with favor. Why do you look with favor on those who deal treacherously? Why are you silent? when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than they? Why have you made men like the fish of the sea, like creeping things without a ruler over them? The Chaldeans bring all of them up with a hook, drag them away with their net, and gather them together in their fishing net. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Therefore they offer a sacrifice to their net and burn incense to their fishing net. Because through these things their catch is large and their food is plentiful. Will they therefore empty their net and continually slay nations without sparing? And we go to chapter 2. And this is Habakkuk. And Habakkuk 2 says, I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart. And I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets, that the one who reads it may run, for the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens towards the goal. It will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay. Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him but the righteous will live by his faith. Furthermore, wine betrays the haughty man so that he does not stay at home. He enlarges his appetite like Sheol and he, he's, he is like death, never satisfied. He also gathers to himself all nations and collects to himself all peoples. And verse six, will not all of these take up a taunt song against him? even mockery and insinuations against him, and say, woe to him who increases what is not his. For how long? And makes himself rich with loans? Will not your creditors rise up suddenly and those who collect from you awaken? Indeed, you will become plunder for them because you have looted many nations. All the remainder of the peoples will loot you. Because of human bloodshed and violence done to the land, to the towns and its inhabitants, woe to him who gets evil gain for his house, to put his nest on high, to be delivered from the hand of calamity. You have devised a shameful thing for your house by cutting off many people so you are sinning against yourself. Surely the stone will cry out from the wall and the raptor will answer it from the framework. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and founds a town with violence. It is not indeed from the Lord of hosts that peoples toil for fire and nations grow weary for nothing. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord 
as the waters cover the sea. And woe to you who make your neighbors drink, who mix in your venom even to make them drunk so as to look on their nakedness. You will be filled with disgrace rather than honor. No, you yourself drink and expose your own nakedness. The cup of the Lord's right hand will come around to you and utter disgrace will come upon your glory. For the violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you and the devastations of its beasts by which you terrify them because of human bloodshed and violence done to the land, to the towns and its inhabitants. What profit is the idol when its maker has carved it, or an image, a teacher of falsehood. For its maker trusts in his own handiwork when he fashions speechless idols. Woe to him who says to a piece of wood, awake, to a mute stone, arise. And that is your teacher? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there's no breath at, at, at all inside it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. And chapter three, bear with me, is, uh, is Habakkuk's prayer. And starts, the Lord, I have heard the report about you and I fear. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, let it make known in wrath, remember mercy. God comes from Timur. And the Holy One from Mount Paran, Phila. His splendor covers the heavens and the earth is full, full of his praise. His radiance is like the sunlight and his rays flashing from his hands. And there is the hiding of his power. Before, he go, before him goes pestilence and plagues come after him. He stood and surveyed the earth. He looked and startled the nations. Yes, the perpetual mountains were shattered. The ancient hills collapse. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushion under distress. The tents curtain, the tent curtains of the land of Midian were trembling. In verse eight, did the Lord rage against the rivers? Or was your anger against the rivers? Or was your wrath against the sea? That you rode on horses, on your chariots of salvation? Your bow was made bare. The rod of chastisement was shown. You cleaved the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and quake. The downpour of water swept by and the deep uttered forth its voice. It lifted its highest hands. Sun and moon stood in their places. They went away at the light of your arrows, at the radiance of your gleaming spear. In indignation, you marched through the earth. In anger, you trampled the nations. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. You struck the head of the house of evil to lay him open from thigh to neck. You pierced with his own spears the head of his thrones. You stormed in to scatter us. They stormed in to scatter us. Their exultation was like those who devoured the oppressed in secret. You trampled on the sea with your horses on the surge of many waters. I heard and my inward parts trembled. At the sound of your lips, of my lips quizzered, quivered, decay entered my bones and in my place I trembled because I must wait quietly for the day of distress, for the people to arise who will invade us. And though the fig tree shall not, should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, and though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stall, yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he, made, he has made my feet like hinds feet, and makes me to walk upon my high places for the choir director on my string instruments. And this is the book of Habakkuk. It's a very powerful book, very, very short book, but very powerful. And uh, Habakkuk has, has written about his dialogue with God and, and what God has answered him to say 
and what he, he, he saw the Lord in all his magnificent glory and, and, and how the earth just stood still when the Lord appears and, and, and the trust and faith that he had and he humbled himself. And um, I just want to, to go through, just take us back and do a little bit of history just to get a context. I think it's important to do the context of, of why was Habakkuk having this prayer? Why was Habakkuk asking God, you know, yeah, I, I cry out and you're not here. You know, why, why is Habakkuk asking these things? And I want you to think about our time because we are in our time and, and, and Habakkuk's time. So I'm going to give the context of Habakkuk's time. And Habakkuk was a prophet to Judah during 608 and 598 BC before Christ. And the 12 tribes of Israel were formerly a united kingdom under King Saul and King David and King Solomon. But during his reign, King Solomon broke his covenant with God and served other gods. And Solomon turned away from God and they had served and had served other gods and this angered God. And Solomon broke the covenant that God had made with Abraham, his fathers before, his father before. And God had made a covenant with Abraham in the book of Genesis. And we want to turn to Genesis um, verse 17 really quickly. And we just, the covenant that Abraham had made. And if you start from number 17, now it, when, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you will be the father of multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father of multitude of nations. And verse 6, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings will come forth from you. And 7, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout the generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after you. So this is the covenant that was made um, with Abraham. And uh, Solomon broke the covenant. And Solomon was the son of David. And after David took the kingdom from Saul, and then Solomon, when David died, Solomon took the kingdom. And Solomon uh, was a good king, a good king um, in the beginning. And he... He was the wisest man ever lived when he, when he got the kingdom. He said, he, he went to the Lord and he said, I cannot do this without you. I, I cannot, I, you need to tell me what to do. If we're talking in, in our own language, God, you need to tell me what to do. I don't know how to do this. And, call, and Solomon humbled himself before the Lord. And God, God loved that. And God made him the wisest man ever lived. But along the line, Solomon broke his covenant with God and it angered God. And God had one of his prophets, his messengers, deliver the word to Solomon. And I just want you to turn to, with me to 1 Kings 11, and we're reading from verse 11 to 13. And this is what God had told Solomon. And God, so, the Lord said to Solomon, because you have done this, and you have not kept my covenant. And we just go to Kings 11. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Just going to find it again. Sorry, Kings 11, 1 Kings 11 from verse 11. And so the Lord said to Solomon, Because you have done this and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and will give it to your servants. And nevertheless, I will not do it in your day for the sake of your father, David, but I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant, David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have cho chosen. And so Solomon angered God and God said, I will tear the kingdom. So we have 
Israel, the 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. And God is tearing the kingdom away from Solomon as a result of him not keeping his, the covenant that Abraham had made with God. And that's his forefathers before him. And that angered him. And God, and I'll, I'll just go further down in that same chapter and, we, and go to verse 30. If we start at 29, it came about at that time when Jeroboam, Jeroboam was the servant that God spoke about. When God said to Solomon, I will tear the kingdom from you and your son will have one and, 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 he, and your servant will have the other. Jeroboam was that servant. And he had Ahijah, uh, the prophet, go to speak to Jeroboam. The prophet Ahijah, the, Sh the Sh Shilonite, found him on the road. No, Ahijah had clothed himself with a new cloak, and both of them were alone in the field. In verse 30, then Ahijah took hold of the new cloak, which was on him, and tore it into 12 pieces. And we, these 12 pieces are representative of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he said to Jeroboam, take for yourself 10 pieces, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and give you ten tribes. But he will have one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen from all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me and have, and have worshipped Astaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, the god of Moab, and Milcom, the god of the sons of Ammon. And they, will, they have not walked in my ways, doing what is right in my sight, and observing my statutes and my ordinances as his father David did. So this is what happened. God had told Solomon that he would do this, and he and this is what happened. And so when we're looking at this context, so Sol the kingdom was divided now, and uh, Jeroboam had 10 um, of the tribes, and Judah, which, the, the is which was called Israel, and the other... Two, which was uh, which was Benjamin and and, and, and um, they, I think it's Manasseh. These two were Judah and Rehoboam, which was Solomon's son. Yes, he Rehoboam. was the king mm -hmm. on that side. Mm -hmm. So this is how we have we had a united kingdom with Israel with the ten tribes, and when we talk about the divided sure. kingdom, yes. Judah was a southern nation. Yes. Right? And Israel was the northern kingdom. Right. And that's how they were referred to. Okay. So we have these two sides of Israel. And so as, as God said to Abraham that kings will come forth. So the, the kings, the, the, the book of kings, if you go to the book of kings, then you will see the change of kings through the times. And under Judah, you will see the kings. And there were good some good kings and some bad kings. And as we go down the line, in Habakkuk's time now, Habakkuk served, um, we say, between Judah, between 608 and 598 before Christ. During the reign, there was a King Josiah, Josiah, and Je Je Jehoiakim. And Josiah was a good king. But Jehoiakim was most of the time that Habakkuk, you know, Habakkuk, he was that, he was a king at that time. And he was a wicked king. Jehoiakim continued to do evil, according to 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 36 to 7. He was 25 years old when he became king and he reigned for 11 years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, to, according to all that his fathers had done. He did evil. And he, 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 he was uh, an evil king. And so we have Habakkuk during this time where there's evil in the southern kingdom, which is Judah. And I just want to, it is important to understand because God is a God we say that never changes. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And after God had, had through Moses, brought Israel out of Egypt, when God gave his people very clear instructions when they were in the plains of Moab and, and through the sermons of Moses, he reminded them what God expects from them. And, and Moses had already given them instructions on how to be holy in Leviticus. If you look at Leviticus chapter 20, 
in verse 7 to 8, it says, Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am the Lord, your God. Keep my decrees and follow them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. And he reminds them of what happens when people rebel against God in the book of Numbers and in the book of Deuteronomy. He reminds them of what God expects from them again. Chapter 28. This chapter is, 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 is one that really struck me as I studied it um, some years ago. But chapter 28 outlines the promise of the blessings of for obedience and the promise of the consequences of disobedience. So it, it, it teaches us to understand what happens when we disobey God. And, and this is what God has decreed on Israel. And if you look at Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2, it says, No, it shall be if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I have commanded you today. The Lord your God will set you high above the nations of the earth. And two, all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. And God is saying that in obedience, there will be blessings. There will be blessings in obedience. And he said, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. And blessed shall you shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground and the offspring of your beast and the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. And blessed shall be your basket and your kneeling bowls. And blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. And the Lord will cause your enemies to rise up against you and be defeated before you. They will come against you one way and will flee before you seven ways. So, the, And it goes on, if you, go, if you take some time and go through the book of Deuteronomy, it goes on to talk about the blessing. And God talk about the curses. And what struck me in Deuteronomy is that Curses will overtake you. There's so many curses that will overtake you for disobedience. So many of them. And in verse 15 in Deuteronomy chapter 28, but it shall come about that if you, this, if you do not obey the Lord your God to observe to do all these commandments and these statutes, which I charge you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And curse shall you be in the city. And cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the offspring of your body and the produce of your ground and the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. And cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. And the Lord in verse 20, um, he speaks about the curses and the confusion and the rebuke, um, you know, in all you undertake to do until you're destroyed, until you perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. And so if you go, if you read that for yourself, you will see all the curses. It's fairly long, so I won't get into it too much, but just wanted to make the point that there's the, God has said to Israel this blessing for, this, for, for obedience and there's consequence of, of, of curses for disobedience. So when we see uh, Solomon disobeying and breaking his covenant and, and the kingdom being divided in two and, and we have Judah, which is one side and his son who rightfully should have all of the, all of the kingdom, he ended up with two, you know, and, and ended up with Judah. And, and, and these kings have come down through the line and we have Jehoiakim, which was, a, was a, 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 an evil king who did evil in the sight of God. So Habakkuk is in this time and Habakkuk has observed these things. And Habakkuk has this conversation with God, and it's about a, it's a prophecy about the upcoming destruction of Jerusalem, the first temple, and it's about the Babylonian captivity of Judah. And if we go to the book of Habakkuk, and we go back to the beginning, and we go to verse chapter 1, He says, how long, O oh Lord, will I call for help? Habakkuk is observing violence and destruction. And he's, and he's, he's looking at it and he's like, you know, we have, we are, you're faithful, you're, you're, you're believers, God. I mean, we are here and, and I'm seeing all these things. And yet, how can you let this thing happen? How can you let this strife exist and contention arises? Therefore, the law is ignored 
and justice is never upheld for the wicked surrounds the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out perverted. And Habakkuk is asking these things. He's sort of violence. I cry to you, violence, yet you do not save. Why? And he's saying, why do you make me see iniquity and cause me to look on wickedness? He's asking God these questions. He's like, where are you? You know, and in our times, a lot of people have, you know, you hear people asking God, where are you? You know, I, and, and I have had some years where I, you're seeing the changes and the rapid fall in the way of the world. And the, and the blasphemy and the disrespect for God. There's no reverence for God. There's no, some people, I don't believe in God. I am my own God. You know, people who say these things that are proud and puffed up and there's no reverence for God. And we see these things happening in our day and we're asking ourselves, God, you show yourself. That's, that was my, my prayer to God. I'm like, God, show yourself. These, we human beings, you're God, you're the creator. Show yourself. So I was like, Habakkuk. And that's why this is so dear to me, because I was like Habakkuk. I'm asking God, you know, you are God. Show yourself. Let them see who you are. You know, so and, and so Habakkuk is asking him, he's like, he's telling him, how long? How long? How long shall this go on? How long shall this go on? How long shall we see oppression across the earth? And we put it in our time. How long shall we see, and, and we see the uprising in the U.S. and, 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 and across the earth, the, the, the whole movement of the Black Lives Matter and the, and the, and that brutal killing of, of of George Floyd and what it's done and and the, and the, and the, 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 the exposure of what we call systematic and cultural racism in the U.S. That's just using the U.S. as an example, but you know this how the psyche of man has been has through the years you know have this passed down and and we see I remember when ISIS started up. Uh, and 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 they move through the Middle East. They move through the Middle East like 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 how you know the, the Chaldeans and they move through and they destroy the, the nations. You know, this is this this is the they move through and they destroy the nations, killing and beheading. And we and we see the ethnic cleansing in Yemen. We see Syria with 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 the government turning on its own people, the destruction of the Syrian people. We are seeing in the United States, we have a, a, a president who, who, who has a, 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 a seemed to have a strategy of dividing the, 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 and a, a divisive strategy for dealing with his own personal, to get his own personal way or, 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 or have his own personal way. And we see the pride within him is being puffed up, as, as we say. And we see these things around us. We see... You know, we, we, we see the, the children that are being stolen and kidnapped and sold into sexual slavery, human trafficking. These are the things that we see in our time. And if we put ourselves in Habakkuk's time, he, he's seen the same similar things. He's seen violence. He's seen iniquity. He's seen wickedness. He is seeing destruction. He is seeing violence before him. He says, strife exists. And contention arises. The law is ignored and justice is never upheld. How often? Look at our time. The law, the, the law is ignored. If you go to the U.S. and what's happening, the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. And we're seeing that there's the, this silencing for, of Christians and, and, want, and, and Christianity and, and this, this move of, of, of uh, you know, against Christians. And you take the Bible out of schools, we turn our backs on God and and you know, and 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 we, we this is the modern age, and, and and all these things we see in 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 our time. And we say this, the wicked surrounds the righteous, and justice never comes out perverted as in Habakkuk. And the Lord says to Habakkuk, "Look among the nations, observe, be astonished, and wonder." Because I am doing something in your day, you will not believe it if you were told. He said, you will not believe it if you were told. I am doing something in your day, in your time. It's going to happen in your time. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans. And the Chaldeans was the Babylonian nation. And this is the description of the Babylonian empire, the Babylonian nation. This is what Babylon did. That fierce and impetuous people, God calls them fierce and impetuous, who march throughout the earth to seize dwelling places, 
which are not theirs. And you, you know, we've seen in history where one nation march and, and one or two nations, three nations, the other the English, the French, and the Dutch, and we call it marching through the earth and they seize nations. We call discovered the Caribbean, discovered America, you know, marching through and taking what is not theirs, killing out the indigenous people or oppressing the indigenous people. And, we're, and you know, we, we have to talk about these things because these are the things that happen in our time or things that we're, we're studying in our time in our history books that have happened because this, this is the things that we that have passed through culture. And, and these are the things that affect us even today. You know, so he's saying the, 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 the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, that fierce and impetuous people who march through the earth to seize dwelling places which are not theirs. They are dreaded and feared. Their justice and authority originates with themselves. There's no, no, there's no, there's no law for God. It's, it originates with themselves. Their horses are swifter than lepers and keener than wolves in the evening. Their horsemen come galloping. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping down to the war. All of them come for violence. They come for violence. All of them come for violence. Their hordes of faces move forward. They collect captives like sand. Yeah? I mean, in our time with what's happening with the, with the oppression of Black people, and I have to call it out, we've seen, we've read, we've read, not seen in our time, but we've read in the history books about the slave trade and, 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 and going into Africa and, and taking out the Africans and, 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 and making money off of, 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 of slave labor. You know, these are things that have happened in our, in our history. And they collect captives like sand. They mock at kings and rulers are a laughing matter to them. So they don't care if there's a king. They don't care if there's a head. They laugh. They mock at the king. They mock at God. Rulers are laughing matter to them. They laugh at every fortress and heap up rubble to capture it. Then they will sweep through like the wind and pass on, but they will be held guilty. Whose strength is their God? This is the Lord speaking to Habakkuk and saying, but they will be held guilty. They, whose strength is their God? And just as you know, this is a, a reminder for us that. We see violence and we see destruction, we see devastation, we see all the wickedness, all the 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 the, the, the blaspheme against against God. And we see the violence, the wars, the rumors of wars. We hear the rumors of wars. We see puffed up leaders across the earth puffing up themselves in their pride. We see these things, and God said they will be held guilty, those whose strength is their God, because they're, they're, they're saying that I, my, I did it, not God. And, and these are words that I, you know, that I, I heard my husband saying, but I did it, not God. Yeah, not God, I did it. In this even coronavirus, you, you, you know, you hear a leader in the U.S. said, this is not God, we did this, 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 we did this. We did this by ourselves. There is no God in this, you know. So there is there their own strength. Their strength is their God, you know. So and and um, and Habakkuk goes on in verse twelve and said, "Are you not from everlasting? You're the God. Are you not from everlasting? The, you're the Lord who 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 has been through the years. You you know you 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 have blessed for obedience." And you have, and they've been cursing for disobedience. Are you not from everlasting? Oh, Lord, my God, my Holy One. He said, my Lord, my God, my Holy One. He said, God, you're the Holy One. He said, we will not die because he's God. You, oh, Lord, have appointed them to judge. You've appointed these Babylonians to judge. And you, O oh, rock, have established them to correct. Your eyes are too pure to approve evil, he's saying to God, and you cannot look on wickedness with favor. Why do you look with favor on those who deal treacherously? And he's, why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than they? 
So he he Habakkuk is 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 seeing and hearing the Lord say, "I will send in the Babylonians." And and Habakkuk is asking him, "But how can you do that?" How can you do that? He's 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 asking God these things, and we tend to think something that we can't go back and ask God. Okay, God, you you are God. How how do you look at? And these are the things that when people say. Why do God allow wickedness to happen to good people? Why do God allow bad things to happen to good people? People say that. People say that all the time. Yeah. He said, why are you silent when the wicked swallow up those more righteous than they? Why, why have you made them like the fish of the sea, like creeping things without a ruler over them? The Chaldeans bring all, all of them up with a hook, drag them away with their net, and gather them together in their fishing net. Therefore, they rejoice and be glad. Therefore, they offer a sacrifice to their net and burn incense to their fishing net. Yeah? Because through these things, their catch is large and their food is plentiful. Will they therefore empty their net and continually slay nations without sparing God is saying, like, how can you allow this to happen? This to happen? How can you allow these people to continue to do this? And if we put ourselves in our time, I'm, yeah, I'm sure we ask like, Show yourself. I that's what that was me, you know. Show yourself. How do you allow? How do you? How do these things continue to happen? And and you know we're thinking that there's no justice, and justice is 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 is, is it, 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 there's no you know justice is is perverse, you know. So let's go to verse chapter two when God when God answers the prophet. Mm -hmm. and after that, he said, "I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart." And I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me. Habakkuk is in is is uh, is, in, is is waiting. He's waiting on the Lord, and he said, "I will, I will keep watch to see to see what he will speak to me, and how I may rely, reply, sorry, when I am reproved." And then the Lord answered me and said, "He said to Habakkuk, the Lord says to Habakkuk, record the vision." and inscribe it on tablets. That's why we're reading this book. Habakkuk did record the vision. That's why we're studying this book, because he did it, and inscribed it on tablets. That the one who reads it may run, for the vision is yet for the appointed time. The one who reads it may run. That the one who reads it will be able to see and understand. The one who reads it, you know, be able to, to make it big, make it for people to see because they have to know it. Yep. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens towards the goal and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay. And Habakkuk, God had told Habakkuk in chapter one, it will happen in your time. And he said, wait for it, for it will certainly come. God is saying, wait for it, it will come. My decrees, what, I, what I've what i set out to do, my, my, my will will be done. Wait for it, it will, it will not delay. It will come in its time and its season. And its correct time and its season. It will not be out of timing and it will not be out of season. It will happen at the appointed time. And verse four, he said, behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within, within him. The proud one, whose, whose strength is their God? The proud one who says, I, I, God doesn't exist. The proud one, I did this all by myself. I, God didn't help me do this. There's no God. The proud one who, 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 who oppresses, who's puffed up. The proud one who's on this high place and looking down on others. The proud one. He says his, his soul is not right within him. And he says, but the righteous will live by his faith. The righteous will live by his faith. This is a very important part 
of chapter two, because God is saying, there's God in all of this. God is saying to his people, the righteous will live by his faith. And I, and when we look at faith, let's talk about faith. And I, I like Hebrews 11 because it, 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 it talks about the triumphs of faith. And faith is defined in Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, for by it the, old, the men of old gain approval. And I'll go on to read verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. God testifying about his gifts through faith, though he is dead, he will speak. He still speaks, rather. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death, and he was not found because God took him up. For he obtained the witness that before he that before his his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. And without faith, it was impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. By faith, Noah was warned by God about things not yet seen. In reverence, prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham, who was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as a, in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city with which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah herself received inability to con uh, uh, received ability to conceive, even beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful who would promise. And we know Sarah was past her years. Therefore, verse 12, therefore, there was born even of one man and him as good as dead, at that as many descendants as the stars of heaven in number, and the innumerable as the and innumerable, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. All these died in faith without receiving promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on earth. For those who say such things made it, make it clear. And they are seeking a country of their own. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have had the opportunity to return. And I go on to verse 17. By faith, Abraham, who was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. It was he to whom it was said, in Isaac, your descendants shall be called. By faith, and we go on to, to verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, re refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin. Considering the reports of Christ's greater riches, than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. So we look at these. These are some. These are some some triumphs of faith, and we can we can go on to read in, in Hebrews um, chapter eleven. But he said, "The just shall live by their faith." The just shall live by their faith, and in Habakkuk chapter two. The righteous, the righteous will live by his faith, and that's according to the NASB um, Bible. And furthermore, wine, be, and verse 5, furthermore, the wine betrays the haughty man, for he does not stay at home, 
He enlarges his appetite like Sheol, and he's like death, never satisfied. He gathers to himself all nations and collects to himself all peoples. And this is God speaking and God, God answering and God ministering to Habakkuk. And he, verse 6, will not all of these take up a taunt song against him, even mockery and insinuations against him and say, woe to him who increases what is not his for how long and makes himself rich with loans. You know, we think of our time and, you know, the, the Babylonians took, um, exploited, you know, the people with high taxes and, and gave them loans that, that they could not probably repay. You know, it's just, just wickedness, making money off of people. And we, we think about our times and we think about mortgages, for example. When you're finished paying off a mortgage, you, the mortgages triple up. If you went for two hundred, you're going. You're paying back six hundred. You know, so that's and 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 somebody's making money along the way. You know, and these are these are these are things that happen. And verse seven: Will not your creditors rise up suddenly, and those who collect from you awaken? Indeed, you will become plunder for for them. God is saying this is this is this is God now speaking to to the wickedness in the Babylonians. You know, because you've looted many nations. He said, indeed, you will become plunder for them because you have looted many nations and all the remainder of the peoples will loot you. The remainder of the peoples will loot you because of human bloodshed and violence done to the land, to the tongues and all its inhabitants. And he said, woe to him who gets evil gain for his house to put his nest on high, to be delivered from the hand of calamity. You have devised a shameful thing for your house by cutting off many peoples. So you are sinning against yourself. Surely the stone will cry out from the wall and the rafter will answer it from the framework. And he's saying, you, you, you do wickedness, wickedness will, will, will come upon you. I'm gonna, you're going to do wickedness to, to, to them, wickedness will return to you. You heap up violence on this one, violence will be heaped up on you. You evil repay with evil. And woe to him, going on to verse 12, woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and forms a tongue with violence. It is not indeed from the Lord of hosts that people toil for fire and nations grow weary for nothing. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge and the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So this is not from the Lord. Is saying, this is not indeed from the Lord of hosts that the people toil for fire. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. And goes on and God goes on to say, woe to you who makes your neighbors drink, who makes in your venom even to make them drunk so as to look upon their nakedness. You, 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 you're, you're, you are, 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 you're wicked, you're devising wickedness for your, for your neighbor. You are dishonest. You will, be, you will be filled with disgrace rather than honor. No, you drink, you yourself drink and expose your own wickedness. So you who do wickedness to others, you, it will be, you will be exposed as well with the same means, with the same means. You... Now you yourself drink and expose your own wickedness for the cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you. The cup in the Lord's right hand will come around to you and utter disgrace will come upon your glory. So you're, you're, you think you're proud and you, you can do bad things to people, but it will come back to you. The cup of the Lord's right hand will come around to you. Vengeance is mine, say the Lord. God is just. Justice exists with God. Yes? For the violence done in verse 17, the violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you and the devastation of its beasts by which you terrify them because of human blood shed and violence done to the land, to the tongues and all its inhabitants. And then in verse 18, it says, what profit is the idol when its maker has carved it? idolatry 
or an image, a teacher of falsehood. For its maker trusts in his own handiwork. Its maker trusts in his own handiwork. So I, I created this. This I, 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 this is, I'm idolizing this. This is my, I, I've done this. This is my God. People who, who, you know, people who, who, who take pride in, in all that they have achieved and who, what, we, where, what they've come to when they're puffed up, you know, puffed up with pride. He says, their soul is not right within them. And you're, and, and yeah, this is, oh, this is, this is my stuff. This is, you know, God hasn't helped me with this. I've done this. This is my stuff. You know, I trust in my own handiwork. I know I see this. I know that I have no, there's nothing called faith. I, this is what I've done. This, and this is it. I can see this. Yep. When he, it, so his maker, for his maker trust in his own handiwork. When he fashions speechless idols, woe to him who says to a piece of wood, a week, to a mute stone, arise. And that is your teacher? A thing, a commodity, is that your teacher? Can it, can it answer you? Can it do anything for you? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all inside it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent. And so, we talk about faith. We talk about what the, the triumphs of faith are, the, 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 the just will live by his faith. You know, so in the days where the Babylonians were, 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 were conquering nations and, and they, were, they were exacting taxation and, and they were... They were they were giving people loans with excessive interest and so forth. They were they were doing all these things. The nations that they captured, the people they killed, they were just ruthless. And and God is saying, "This is who I will send to judge." But they will also be judged. They will also be judged. They will also be judged. And if we go on to verse the third chapter, I have a cup. Here's the Lord, and he prayers. He says his prayer. He said, Lord, I have heard the report about you, and I fear. Oh, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. And he says, in wrath, remember mercy. So God, so Habakkuk, no one understands. No one understands. And he he has this he he describes God he, the vision of God in 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 this in the next few like next few verses and he said God comes from Timon and the Holy One from Mount Paran his splendor covers the heavens and as I read this I want you to think about this God that we serve the earth is full of his praise his radiance is like the sunlight. He has rays flashing from his hand, and there is the hiding of his power. Before him goes pestilence, and plague comes after him. He stood, and imagine the Lord, he stood and surveyed the earth. He created the earth. He looked and startled the nations. Yes, the perpetual mountains were shattered. The perpetual mountains, perpetual is, it continues and continues, it's always there, it's probably there for, for a lifetime. The perpetual mountains were shattered. The ancient hills collapsed. His ways are everlasting. He does not change. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of cushion on the distress and the tents the tent curtains of the land of Midian were trembling. And verse 8, did the Lord rage against the rivers? Or was your anger against the rivers? Or was your wrath against the sea? That you rode on your horses, on your chariots of salvation? You, your bow was made bare 
the rods of chastisement were sworn. You cleaved the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and quaked. The dull pour of water swept by. The deep uttered forth its voice. It lifted its hands. The waters, the deep uttered forth its voice. It lifted its hands. Sun and moon stood in their places. Sun and moon stood in their places. It's like God is here. They went away at the light of your arrows. Think about that. The whole earth is filled with his glory. They went away at the light of your arrows, at the radiance of your gleaming spear. In indignation, you marched through the earth. Your anger, in anger, you trampled the nations. You went forth for the salvation of your people. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for the deliverance of your people. Say, if God is for you, who can be against you? For the salvation of your anointed. You struck the head of the house of evil to lay him open from the thigh to neck. You pierced with his own spears the head of his thrones. You struck the head of the house of evil to lay him open from thigh to neck. And you pierce with his own spears the head of his thrones. They stormed in to scatter us. Their exultation was like those who devour the oppressed in secret. You trampled on the sea with your horses in the surge of many waters. Habakkuk says, I heard and and in my inward parts trembled at the sound of my lips quivered. Decay entered my bones and in my place I trembled because I must wait quietly for the day of distress. For the people to arise who will invade us. So Habakkuk, God said to Habakkuk, this it will happen. It will certainly come. Though it tarries, it will certainly come. I remember in verse in chapter one, he says it will happen in your day. And Habakkuk is saying, I will wait. Because God is God says, I he come for the to went forth for the salvation of his people, for the salvation of his anointed. Habakkuk is a prophet. He has not left his people out. So we're asking God, where is God in all of this? And there's, and, and God is saying, I, you know, I, God is, God is saying, he, God is, is saying, I am coming forth for the salvation of my people. The just shall live by His faith. He said, live by faith. Live by faith. Have faith. And we went through Hebrews eleven and the triumphs of faith. Mm-hmm. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, the just shall live by his faith. Have faith in me. So Habakkuk has, has, is having faith now. Because he sees God. He, he has a, the, 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 the description of God. The sun and moon stood still in their places. The deep cry out. The deep, the deep utters forth his voice. And the mountains, the perpetual mountains shattered ancient hills the earth stood still the earth knows god yes the earth knows god they know him we are his creation know god and habakkuk said decay enters my bones and in my place i tremble because i must await quietly for the day of distress when the people for the people who to arise who will invade us the babylonians they're coming, the Chaldeans, the same, but they're coming. A fierce and impetuous nation. Habakkuk with faith said, though the fig tree should not blossom and there be no fruit on the vine, though the, the yield of the olive should fail and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off, from the fold, 
and there be no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will exult in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he has made my feet like hinds feet to make me walk on my high places. So he's saying, God says, I, I will send them. There's, there's, there's violence in the earth. And if we, if we can think of our own time, there's violence in the earth. There is injustice in the earth. There's oppression in the earth. The proud are, are trampling on, 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 the, on, the, on the weak. And God's people, God's righteous people, are in the midst of it all. And, and God is saying, you see the proud? They have, their soul is not right within them. You live by faith. That's what God is saying. There's where is God in all of this. God is saying, I want you to live by faith. Have faith in me, just as Abraham had faith, just as Moses had faith. Just as, 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 as Sarah had faith. Just as, 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 the, as, as David had faith. Solomon had faith. Although he, he did wrong, he still had faith. He went to God and said, I don't know how to do this. I, ha- I don't know how to do this, Lord. I'm a king. I'm, I'm, a, I'm just a little boy. How can, I, how, can I, how can I do this? I don't know how to do this. I, I look to you. That's having faith. So whatever regards of whatever happens, that God has said it will happen. So if there's a coming of a nation like the Babylonians that will invade and, and God, the description of those Babylonians, they come and they oppress, they trample, they take, they do all these things and we're in the midst of it and God says, have faith, have faith in me because I, they will not get away with it. I will deal with them treacherously in the same way they deal with you, I will deal with them. And in, in, in chapter two, he says, they will not get away with it. And Habakkuk said, okay, God. And he says, though I'm scared. And they've been, he's waiting for the time when that will happen. He's trusting in God. And he says, even if there's no food, nothing, as he knows this, this, the Babylonians will come and wipe out. There's no food, there's nothing. I will trust in the God of my salvation. Just like the three Hebrew, boy, Hebrew boys who will not bow. And they were thrown into the fire. He said, well, if, even if he does not come to save us, we will not bow. Even if he doesn't come to save us, we'll trust in him. Daniel trusted in God. He opened the windows so he can pray to his God. They all can hear him, see him up there. He, I trust in my God. When he was thrown into the lion's den, God came through for him. Then the king ran out. I, I can only imagine looking because he couldn't sleep at that night. He was just, and I believe his spirit was like, oh, Daniel, I don't, you know, interceding. He's, and he runs out to the lion's den and he calls his name and he was still there. Probably playing with the lions, lying down, resting with the lions, and the lions are like at one at peace with him, you know. So God comes through. Just to remind us that God comes through. Trust in God and trust in what He's saying. So with this book, Habakkuk was a is a is 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 a very very powerful book for me because I I I, I could identify with this. And in our time, where we're saying, you know, where's God? What's God saying? What's he going to do? Well, God has said what he's going to do. Wickedness will not prevail. I am God. The earth is full of my glory. I will remove your glory. The proud, the proud, his soul is not right. The just shall live by his faith. The, 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 the righteous shall live by his faith. Faith in God, the God of his, and trust in the God of his salvation. So this is something to that book to, to, to study some more. And, and you know, we have to listen to what, God, what the Lord is saying in this time and in this season. As we see and we look around and we see all the destruction around us, but know that God is with us. 
God has not forsaken us. God has come, will come to, the, will deliver his people. And sometimes it is, we, some, sometimes as, 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 he, as he's, he, he says in Hebrews, some, some of them died, but it was for the generations to come. Abraham, the, the, the promise to Abraham, it was for the generations to come come down through David and Solomon and, and all of these, but for generations to come. He was a father of nations. So we need to have faith in God and have faith in God of our salvation, exalt in the Lord of our salvation. So um, at this point in time, I just want to, um, for feedback, open up for, you know, for anyone who is, on this, the ministers who are on this, or anyone in the audience who you know who who had something to share, will open up for the host, you know, to and the ministers to to give some feedback. Thank oh, you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what? Topped off Bible study for me tonight. I'm looking on my watch and I saw a text message. I have some mangoes for you. <laughs> I have some mangoes for you. So on top of the wonderful word and on top of everything, it, it, it was just topped off with, I got mangoes for you. No, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's the thing is what I'm no after. Remember we're looking about Abacuc saying, you know, even if there is nothing left, even if the land is dried up, even if God, even if you don't even deliver me from this, I will still mm -hmm. trust in you. So, you know, even if there's drought, I, I'm thankful for the word tonight to remind me. I often ask God, you know, in my sufferings and, and personally and around me, I said, God, what is all this? This is not what you personally said to me. This is not what, what you've said to me. This does not translate what your plan is for my life. And I, I imagine this is what Habakkuk is talking about. You've allowed the enemy to invade us. What's happening? You've allowed injustice to take over the land. You've allowed people who are doing good to reap bad. That's effectively what Habakkuk is saying, you know. People who come to church, people who serve you, people who pay their tithes, houses are being taken away. God, what is this? And, you know, back to the, the title for tonight, where is God in all of this? And he said, I'm going to stand my watch and I'm going to hear what he is saying to me. And he responded like only he would. Habakkuk, have faith. The just shall live by their faith. You know what he's saying? I like to say he, he is calling Habakkuk out. You call yourself Habakkuk, you're righteous. Habakkuk, you're just. Here's my answer to you. Live by your faith. And I believe that's what he's saying to us tonight. We call ourselves just. We call ourselves righteous because we are just to remind. He makes us just and he makes us righteous. And he wants us, regardless of what's happening around us, to live by faith. Thank you for reminding me of that word tonight, that no matter what calamity is happening around me, I must, my faith must remain firm in God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else wants to, to share? Anybody else wants to give their feedback from her study, from her teaching? Anybody else wants to give their feedback? Uh, online, someone said, um, thanks, Sister Roz. Someone else said, yes, he's able. I guess it's from us talking about it. I am learning to walk in faith. Absolutely. That's the only walk that matters. The faith walk, the walk where we can see everything and we can dissect and, 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 and analyze everything. That's truly not profitable. The faith walk is the one that will be profitable. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Anybody else want to, to share? Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. I just want to say something very, very short. Rose, thank you. Thank you. And if we just sit and realize that all of these studies, what we are doing, if we look at every character of the Bible, we know that 
every one of them face different kind of situations. So like when you decide to follow Christ, you're going to face different kind of situations. When you have to send a message out, you have to face a certain situation when it's ordained by God, right? And the end of the story, like to make the story short, is we just, no matter what we are passing through, like how Ms. Rose said, we just need to cry out to God. Like that is the, like, that is what we have to do. The faith is there, yes, but we just need to cry out to God and he's going to give us everything that we need when we are facing or when we are living different kind of situation. Definitely, there is nothing else that we can go to or no one else we can go to. It's definitely when we see all these books in the Bible, we just need to cry out to God. Just cry out to him. Sometimes you're not going to be in seeing him, but just cry out to him. And we're going to get our answer from him. And thank you, sister, for reminding us about increasing our faith and exercising our faith. Just like how he did it here in the book. Thank you. I, I, I also wanted to share. Um, no, 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 you, you leave it. That's that's okay. Uh, that, that's fine. You guys will, whoever's online, you will see Roz. I'm just speaking in the background. It's it's a little bit too technical for me to unmute and all that stuff. So it's fine. I don't need to show my face. But there's, there's two, a couple of things I just wanted to point out that really spoke to me. Um, I, I really, I really like and I appreciate the context that she laid out for this Bible study, the history um, you know, that she's laid out in terms of going back and searching straight through and coming through the whole lineage and, 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 and putting this book into its correct context um, because it made it much more powerful. It, it made it speak to us a lot more. Um, it made it a lot more relevant. And only this afternoon, my, my son was came to me. Uh, we have to go get haircuts, by the way, on, on, on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. And my son came to me and he opened the door and he just said, Dad, you need to, and just said, you need to wash my hair because I don't want to go through torture. And I looked at him and said, son, what are you saying? And he's like, you don't want to go through torture. What he actually meant was that he didn't want to, his hair, he's not combed his hair for quite some time. And he wanted me to wash his hair and to comb it out properly for him so that when he, when, when he goes to the barber, it's not a torturous process. But I had to step him through the process and say, Son, you need to give me a context. I knew what he was trying to say, but I, it's just, it was just a teaching moment for me. And I was telling him, just give me a context. Explain the big picture as to what we're trying to achieve. Why are, you, why are you saying this to me? And then he went back and he was able to say, okay, dad. And he explained everything to me. So I, I use that as a reference to say, I really appreciate the history um, you know, that she's laid as the foundation. Then we can put Habakkuk in it. And now I, I don't know about you, but I have a much even greater appreciation um, for the reminder of, of why Habakkuk was lamenting, why he was feeling so downtrodden, why he was, you know, in the situation that he was in, knowing the history and where they say fit in. Um, so I thought that that was extremely powerful. One thing I wanted to clarify, um, she said that her husband said, uh, made mention of all of this thing I did. I, I just wanted to clarify that that was me making reference to the governor of New York, not to call names, but the governor of New York, in one of his press conferences, he, he made mention of the progress that they were making in for the COVID-19 for New York, New York City, um, New York State. And he said, God didn't do this. We did this. That is specifically what he said. And I thought he did a very good, the governor did a very good job up until that point, um, when he, he literally and deliberately said, God did not do this. This was no God. This was nothing. We did this by, by us working together. And we brought those numbers down. And this is something that we should feel proud of. So I just wanted to add a little bit of context. So it wasn't Brother Anson saying that. It was it was just making that reference. But it, but it, but it really sticks out um, in the point that she was sharing you know, with, with puffed up people and people walking around thinking that their own ways are, you know, is God to them. It reminded me so much of Daniel 4 with Nebuchadnezzar, you know, puffing up his chest. You see pride in, in, in person and he's there talking about how he has made this and this is all his. And we saw what, what was the outcome of that. 
God, at that same moment, God took the kingdom away from him. And for seven years, we know what he was doing. And, you know, so we see all the whole, all, all the whole outcome of that. But this is a good reminder of when we see the stuff that is going on around us. Um, sometimes when we feel so discouraged, um, I just like to fast forward through Habakkuk and get to those last bits where it talks about, though this may happen and though this may happen, I will still, and that is the part that I really like to get to because that's the part that encourages me. In spite of all of this stuff that has happened, in spite of everything, um, you know, this this heartfelt conversation that Habakkuk had with God, in spite of all of that, Habakkuk came right back down to earth and he ended and he landed and he finished it in, this, in, in the correct way. Similar to Job. Job went through his entire lament, arguing all kinds of stuff. We saw that last week, but at the end of Job, we saw what was the outcome of how Job settled his mind. Same thing in Ecclesiastes. After all the thing, and the teacher says this, and the teacher says that, and all oh, this is just futile, and this is just in vain, and life is all in vain. At the end of it, in, 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 at the end of Ecclesiastes, he settled himself and understood that at the end of the day, it's, it's about us trusting in him, having faith in him, and serving him, and looking to him. And one of the things that I'm learning even in this season um, and this may not make sense to some of you, but it makes a. I try to find the correct words to use, but tell me if you understand it. Sometimes, when you don't understand a situation, you got to find a way to make sense of it. And some of you might be scratching your head, but it, it's it's it's. I, I'm going to find the words. Trust me, I'm going to find the words to put it in. But it's sometimes we search so much to understand exactly what is happening. And God doesn't want us to understand exactly what is happening because it's maybe it's not for us to understand at that point in time. He just wants us to have faith. And in having the faith, we will make sense of it for ourselves. And in the making in the sense of it, it's just something that allows us to carry on with that faithful steps. But we don't necessarily understand the fullness of the situation. We may not understand why God is sending us to the supermarket to buy milk to take it to someone's house to give them or, you know, to get mangoes um, as Pastor Nida, I'm ho hoping she will bring some of those mangoes for us. But we may not understand that. But in his wisdom, you know, he's doing something like that. And it's not for us to necessarily wrap our heads around understanding, but we need to make sense of it and proceed um, in faith. Amen? So sorry, I, 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 always, I always speak too loud, but, you know, I just wanted to share that bit with us. Anybody else want to share? I'm just trying to man the comments, likes, text back to people, let them know that we are grateful. Your sister is watching, of course, and she's commenting. Uh, she's preaching along. She's teaching and preaching along with you. And text, trust in God, believe in, <laughs> believe in sight. It does not matter. So she's been, I've been watching. Uh, she's been teaching and preaching along with you, telling you that faith is the language of heaven and, and she's Amen. been on. So God bless you. Good night. Good night, Miss Grace. How are you? <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, uh, your dad also. My dad. Yes. My yes, dad. Yes. Good yeah, night. Wow. Wonderful man of God. God bless awesome. you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So I'm sure he is beaming with pride. Amen. Just seeing his Amen. daughter deliver the word. Good seeing his Amen. daughter. And then Sister Omira now. She says, good night, everyone. It's good to join you all tonight. Sister Roz, nice to hear you. I didn't caught the study, but the topic, where is God in all of this? And she, you know, she's, oh, she's, she's sharing. And she says, one must understand that sometimes God expects certain things from us. He's a jealous God. Yes, we are doing things we usually think is correct. But on another hand, we are not aware that some of these things are displeasing to God. He then brings some of us to our knees to wake us up. So there's quite a bit of feedback. And your dad says, Ra's dad again, to lay the foundation was one of the main points in helping you to arrive at the conclusion. So like a true teacher, a true teacher, the just must live by faith. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's very good, very good contributions going on. I've been responding by, by phone, um, and liking by phone throughout and, um, praise the Lord. If there is anyone else who was blessed, um, by the, by, by this tonight, 
feel free to share in comments. Feel free to share in, uh, in Say something. Let us know. Tell us your main takeaway point. Tell us your main takeaway point. Tell us your main, what did you learn from it? Tell us what you learned from it. Let us hear. We are, we are here just for another two minutes or so. And for anyone else who wants to jump in to tell us their takeaway point from the study tonight, it is always good to take away something from the word of God. When we hear it, we must take away something, something to keep us even for the next five minutes, 24 mm. hours, something to keep us. The just shall live by faith. And she laid it out, talked about Rehoboam, Jehoiakim. She, she let us know the foundation, the divided um, Judah and the divided kingdom. So was that your takeaway point or your takeaway point was the lamenting of, um, of Habakkuk? Anybody? Okay, let me see. I don't have anyone else um, at the moment. But to all that joined us tonight, we thank you for taking your time to study with us. We thank you for joining us tonight. We're here every Friday night from 7. No, we don't always come on at 7. It's a little Caribbean thing. We're late sometimes. We're working on tardiness. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. But we are here between 7 and 7.15. Take you generally to 8.30 with the word of God. We're back on Sunday. Uh, it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to you, uh, Mr. Trevor. When it comes, we may not hear from you on Sunday, but I hope you enjoy your Father's Day and you have a wonderful and blessed one. And to all the fathers that are watching us tonight, a happy, not you, Brother Anson, a happy Father's Day <laughs> to you when it comes on Sunday if we don't hear from you again. We're going to close our broadcast tonight. And as usual, we like to give you the opportunity. If there's anyone that is watching YouTube, Periscope, or Facebook that does not know this God that we're talking about, that does not have a relationship with the God that Habakkuk was lamenting to, the God that Habakkuk was complaining to, the God that Habakkuk was having a conversation and communicating with, I invite you to invite Jesus into your life tonight. Sister Claudia, thank you. God bless you for watching. I invite you to invite him in your life tonight. All it takes is for you to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I surrender my will to your will for my life. And if you can confess that tonight, he is able to save you. He is able to deliver you. And you would have become a new man, a new person in Christ. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he's become a new creature and all things have passed away. And if you've said those words tonight and confess with your heart sincerely, we believe that you've become new tonight. Join us online. Let us know if you've accepted Christ tonight. Let us know if you've made that step, that further step to say, Lord, I need you and I'm going to commit my life to you. Send us an email. It's contact at hopebay.org. Send us a direct message. Visit our website, www.hopebayministries.org. It's right there in the lower third. Reach out to us and let us know how you've made changes to your life. Find a Bible-believing church if you are not in the Cayman Islands. Let us know what your, all your progress is and things that are going on. We are here to help you pray and to study the word. This has been another Bible study. Oh, oh one more thing. <laughs> Turn with us our benediction. <laughs> Turn with us to Romans 15 and 13. God bless you, Sister Omira. Romans 15 and 13 and it reads, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that he may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. May you abound in hope through the power of God. May you abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Until then, my friends, we will see you at 10 a.m. Same place on Sunday. God bless you.